organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, see how locals started their own Occupy Iowa protest. And find out what presidential hopeful Rick Perry had to say when he stopped in Iowa this weekend. And in sports, we've got the highlights from the Hawkeye football team's defeat against Penn State. Daily Iowan TV starts now. Thanks for tuning in to your Sunday edition of Daily Iowan TV, your television news, sports, and weather source for the Daily Iowan. I'm Josh Bolander. And I'm Emily Bussey. Hundreds of locals set up camp at College Green Park over the weekend for the ongoing Occupy Iowa protest. About 300 demonstrators occupied the park initially on Friday, and more than 50 people are still camped at the park today. The demonstration is only one of many similar movements taking place across the nation following the Occupy Wall Street protests in New York City. Iowa City area protesters said they are protesting the uneven distribution of wealth in the U.S., as well as what they see is a lack of democracy. This afternoon, protesters said they plan to stay at the park indefinitely and have started discussing winter survival plans. Iowa caucus contender Rick Perry stopped in Johnson County this weekend. The Texas Republican discussed immigration and job creation. Daily Iowan TV's Ryan Jones has more on the campaign visit. Big Hawkeye welcome to the couple from Lone Star. Rick Perry spoke to a sold-out room on Friday, outlining his blueprint for the country. Perry was making good on his promise to visit every county in Iowa by speaking to the community of Tiffin. He started his speech with showing his record on immigration. A bill to give illegal immigrants IDs was vetoed by Rick Perry under his term as governor. He also took a jab at Obama for his stance on immigration. The president came to my home state. And he made the statement that the border was safer than it had ever been. I, I, when I first heard that, I thought maybe he was on the Canadian border. I, While Rick Perry spoke on many issues, he focused on the economy and the fight against President Obama's jobs bill that is going through Congress right now. The creation of jobs, getting this country back working again, that ought to be the number one job of the President of the United States day in and day out. Nothing else. The repeal of Obama's health care plan was a crowd favorite, receiving a standing ovation. On day one, when I walk into the Oval Office, I'm going to whip out a, probably a Sharpie, <laughs> and I'm going to put my signature on one of the most onerous pieces of legislation, one of the most costly pieces of legislation, trying to take over one-sixth of the economy of this country and stand between you and your doctor, and that is Obamacare. Wipe out as much of it with this pen, with an executive order. Ryan Jones, Daily Iowa TV. Perry also visited three other Iowa towns over the weekend. A UI student government senator was arrested after he allegedly threatened his friend with a knife. According to police reports, 20-year-old Rashab Nath was horseplaying with a friend and using a knife as a sword at his Iowa Avenue apartment a little over a week ago. Nath then allegedly pushed his friend up against a sink, held the knife to his neck, and said he would kill him. Nath is accused of harassment and assault while displaying a dangerous weapon. And still more to come from Daily Iowa TV, see why some students rallied for diversity on campus. And in sports, we'll take a look back at the swimming team's inner squad meet Saturday. Plus, see how the volleyball squad fared in their weekend showdown with the Hoosiers. All of this and more to come, but first, let's take a look at our local weather forecast from Daily Iowa TV's Mike Howell. Thanks, guys. After a beautiful and sunny weekend, it looks like we're in store for a small dip in the temperatures and some rain in our near future. Tomorrow, though, you should have a nice 63-degree sunny walk to your morning classes. Keeping the sunny skies in the afternoon, we will see the temps rise to 71. And Monday night, we'll see a clear night with temps in the lowered 60s. Looking at your six-day forecast, you might have to get the umbrellas out after Monday. We have a chance for rain until Thursday. The weekend looks great, though, with sunny skies and temps in the lower 60s for this weekend's home football game on Saturday and with a slight chance of rain on Sunday. That's your check of the weather. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Mike. 
And police say a North Liberty Punchero's employee could face deportation after he allegedly provided a social security number that did not belong to him. Cruz Maximo Campos, 22, allegedly also wrote a false social, social security number on Ponchero's employment forms as well as a false permanent alien card number. Maximo Campos is accused of tampering with record, records. In Iowa City, the Human Rights Commission has proposed a sanctuary city ordinance to the city council, hoping to create a safe haven for illegal immigrants. However, North Liberty City Councilors told the Daily Iowan they have had no such discussions. Even though the UI campus is largely made up of white students, some here are pushing for more diversity. The group Bridging Global and Domestic Diversity is recruiting students for a program which teaches minorities how to be leaders on the UI campus. A rally Friday aimed to address the lack of diversity on campus. This fall, Caucasian students made up 89% of, made up of incoming freshmen. The event urged students to apply for the leadership training program. The idea being that it can't really be talked about enough, right? To really like deal with prejudice and to really deal with um, issues of intercultural diversity, it's important that people are always talking about it. Applications for the program are due October 27th. To learn more, you can visit the website at the bottom of your screen. And more than 60 UI Dance Marathon participants ran the Chicago Marathon this weekend. Since 2008, Dance Marathon members have run the Chicago Marathon to raise even more money for pediatric cancer. Earlier today, 61 UI runners ran the Chicago Marathon and they say they raised over $50,000. Dance Marathon raises money annually to support pediatric cancer patients and their families. Last year, the group raised about $1.2 million. And now Daily Iowan TV Sports' Tyler Culver joins us at the desk for a look at Hawkeye Sports. And Tyler, the Hawks took a step back this weekend. Yes, Josh. At times Saturday, Hawk fans had to wonder if Ken O'Keefe left his playbook on the plane. Coming off two weeks rest, Iowa looked pretty rusty Saturday in Happy Valley. Kirk Ferentz had won 8 of 9 against Jopa heading into the day. Many of those wins had come in odd fashion. That trend would continue in this one, but would it work in the Hawks' favor? Not here. Take another look at this play. The ball bounces off the referee, and it's a live ball and a Penn State first down. The Nittany Lions starting out lucky. Penn State would cap off this drive with a field goal and be up 3-0. Iowa trying to counter Marcus Coker. Blast safety Nick Suitcase. Unable to finish the drive in the end zone, though. The Hawks get a field goal to knot it up at 3 all. Penn State switching quarterbacks to Matt McGloin in their next series, who zips one up to an open Eric Moy. Penn State would get a field goal and go into halftime with a 6-3 advantage. Second half, Iowa was in trouble with Penn State threatening to score the game's first touchdown, but McGloin throws a poor ball and Micah Hyde comes away with a big interception. Now Iowa driving, Vandenberg hits McNutt for the 27-yard reception. Hawks trying to take back the lead. But still in the same drive, Vandenberg looking upfield. He gets hit though, and the ball comes loose. Penn State would recover, and it would be another blown opportunity for the Hawks. 11 plays later, Penn State with the first and goal, and they would go with the play action to throw off the Iowa defense. Penn State would take the lead 13-3 and never look back from that point. Iowa falls now to 3-2 on the season and 0-1 after their Big Ten conference opener. The University of Iowa volleyball team went 1-1 this weekend in two tough matches at Carver Hawkeye Arena against Indiana and Purdue. The Hawks defeated Indiana in an exciting five-set match on Friday. Freshman Alex Lavelle led the team with 16 kills and sophomore Bethany Yeager grabbed 20 digs. After six ties, the Hawks clinched fifth and in the fifth and final set with a score of 15 to 13. Saturday night didn't bring as much success for the Hawks as they faced off against Purdue. The matches were all extremely close, ending 25-21 in the third and final set as the Boilermakers took the W. Despite the loss, Iowa head coach Sharon Digman was pleased with her team's effort. Once again, Bethany Yeager played with while picking up 14 digs and sophomore Rachel Bedell had nine kills in just 16 attempts. The Hawks will now have a three-game road stretch before returning back to Carver. The Hawkeyes return to Big Ten action Friday, October 14th in Minneapolis, facing the Minnesota Gophers at 7 p.m. And in 11 days, the men's and women's swim team will be facing opening up their season at Wisconsin. But this past Saturday, the, te the team swam black versus gold. The two teams hosted their inner squad meet with the coaches letting their captains select the teams. This is really just a fun meet. They're excited to race. We've been training hard since the beginning of school. But really, this is just the beginning. Uh, our real season starts here in, in, uh, in about 10 days. We start our competition season, a real dual meet. So uh, that's going to be exciting. But we got a lot of young people, a lot of work to do. 
For the upperclassmen, the annual meet serves as a fun atmosphere to swim against each other, but the meet also helps freshmen get a taste of collegiate competition. Our number one thing, especially for our freshmen, is get experience racing, racing each other. I mean, we got a lot of good guys competition-wise. One freshman took advantage of the meet as Becky Stoudin broke an impressive three pool records on the day. Really good. It's a definitely a confidence booster. Um, not expected, but I'm really excited about it. So, In a very close meet, the black and gold squad walked away with the win with the final tally was 108 to 91. So a good weekend for the swim team, Josh. Not so much for the football team, but good to hear that the swim team's doing all right. Nope. Thanks, Tyler. And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek at Monday's pages of the Daily Iowan. Read about a UI grad student whose book about philosophy and the TV show Arrested Development is set to come out in December. Plus, read the Daily Iowan sports analysis of the Hawkeyes' loss to Penn State. And here's a quick look at Monday's weather forecast. We can look forward to a mostly sunny start to the week with a high of 79 and the lowest 57 degrees with a slight chance of showers overnight. That's your latest update from Daily Iowan TV. You can tune in tomorrow at the same time or, get, or check us out anytime at online at dailyiowan.com. Until next time, I'm Josh Bolander for Daily Iowan TV.